Our final reading for this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. Let us listen for God's word. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and he went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does this prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Philip was a rock star. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but in the early church world, he was the bomb. He was it. He was a rock star. You know, Philip was one of the seven original deacons in the church. You might remember the story where there were some complaints that the original apostles You know, Peter and his friends were neglecting the widows and orphans. So they did what every good Presbyterian would do. They formed a committee. (laughs) They formed a committee of seven men who would be the first deacons. Their primary responsibilities were to tend the poor, the widows and orphans, the ones who were most vulnerable in society, and the sick. So that is what Philip was doing. He was engaged in a ministry of care and compassion. It was what he was called to do. But then things got really bad for the Christians, really bad. Saul, who we know as the Apostle Paul, was persecuting Christians. He watched as another deacon, Stephen, was stoned to death. He barged into people's homes and arrested men and women and sent them to prison because he suspected they were part of the way, the name for the early Christian church. So what did everyone do? They fled. They scattered. They got out of Dodge or Jerusalem, as the case may be, Philip included. But here is something amazing. Philip didn't go somewhere else in Israel. He went to Samaria. Samaria is the last place a good Jew would go. And let us remember that Christians were also still practicing Jews in the first century. But the animosity between Jews and Samaritans, it was real. Remember the power behind Jesus' parable of the good Samaritan was that the Samaritan, not the priest or the Levite, good Jewish men who stopped, it was the Samaritan who stopped and helped the person who was beaten and left for dead on the side of the road. It was the Samaritan who was compassionate and generous, not the two others. And it was to Samaria that Philip went. 
and it was there that he began his career as a rock star. Philip, who was kind and compassionate, went to Samaria and began to preach the good news about Jesus Christ. He healed people in Jesus' name. He baptized both men and women, and Luke tells us there was great joy in that city, all because of Philip. Philip, who used to deliver food to the hungry and visit the sick and care for the widows and orphans, and now he could add evangelist to the list, but really, he was a rock star. And you know, a person with that kind of success rate could expect to go on to bigger and better things, right? I mean, first stop Samaria, next stop Carnegie Hall. But no, God had other plans. An angel comes to Philip and tells him to go south to Gaza on the wilderness road. We might think of that, well, as a, a nice journey through the woods with lots of trees and wildflowers and a little forest animals. Wilderness in biblical language means desert. It means wasteland. It means a no man's land. And that's where the rock star was told to go. And because Philip is who he is, he goes. I mean, this is like telling your star preacher that he wasn't going to go preach at Fourth Presbyterian Church in Chicago. He was going to go to the Mojave Desert. But Philip, obedient, kind, generous Philip, goes where he is called to go, even if he doesn't understand it. So there he is, walking down this wilderness road and out of nowhere in this no man's land, here is this Ethiopian eunuch in his chariot reading the prophet Isaiah. And as he passes by Philip on this wilderness road, the spirit of the Lord tells Philip to go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran to catch it. As one commentator remarked, either the Ethiopian eunuch had the slowest chariot this side of the Jordan River, or Philip was the fastest marathon runner in Israel. I mean, it is a pretty funny scene if you think about it, isn't it? I mean, here's this man riding in a chariot, or should I say, bouncing around in a chariot, reading scripture out loud, and God tells Philip, after it has passed him, to go run and chase it. I mean, wouldn't it have been nicer of God to tell Philip, there's gonna be a chariot coming, get ready, you're gonna have to stop it, but no. God doesn't tell Philip ahead of time, but Philip, Philip catches that chariot anyway. A couple of things we need to remind ourselves to get some clarity on this story is that, that eunuchs were men who were castrated. Often, because of this, you could tell a eunuch by their appearance. And they were not considered men by the Jews. They were not considered part of the community, nor were they allowed to worship. Jews were not allowed to talk to, touch, or eat with eunuchs. Given this, many eunuchs held positions of prominence in other lands, like Ethiopia. Ethiopians as a whole were considered to be the most beautiful people in the Near East. So Philip catches up to this chariot and he asks this Ethiopian eunuch, do you understand what you are reading? How can I, unless someone guides me? which confirms what we just said, that the Ethiopian might have gone to Jerusalem to worship, but he wasn't allowed in. He wasn't allowed in the temple. And thus he did not receive any instruction. He wasn't allowed to worship with the rest of the community. So the Ethiopian eunuch invites Philip to hop in the chariot and just like Philip proclaimed the gospel to the outcast Samaritans, Philip proclaimed the gospel to this outcast eunuch. And even though he wasn't preaching to crowds of people, he was still a rock star. 
So as they were riding along and bouncing along in the chariot, talking about the love God has for everyone, that God would come to us as one of us, as they were riding in the chariot, talking about the power of Jesus Christ to bring life out of death, as they were riding along, the Ethiopian eunuch was converted. He became a believer. And wouldn't you know, in the middle of the wilderness road, the desert, the wasteland, there was water. And the Ethiopian eunuch said, look, here's water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? Oh, the Ethiopian eunuch did understand. He did get it. He knew the love God had for him. And Philip, instead of saying, well, for starters, you're a eunuch. You're not allowed to be part of the community. Philip got it. Philip understood the message of the gospel. Philip knew the love God has for everyone, including the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip, the rock star, got down from the chariot and waded into the water with the Ethiopian eunuch and baptized him, baptism being the way one enters the community. And as he came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and as for the Ethiopian, he went on his way rejoicing. And Philip, the rock star, finally made his way north to Caesarea, preaching all the way. You see, I think we are all called to be rock stars like Philip. The story has me thinking if Philip, a man who was called to serve others, a man who was called to take care of the least of these, if Philip can go to the places that no one wanted to go and to be with the people that no one wanted to be with, what is stopping people like you and me from doing the same? What is stopping us from being the messengers of good news to those people whose society or the church or our work or school say don't belong? What is stopping us from welcoming people who are oppressed and outcast in our society into our community? What is stopping us from sharing the love of Christ with others who have been cast aside and cast outside the bounds of their worshiping community and listening to their stories and teaching them about Jesus? You know, if Philip can be a rock star, why can't you or I be one too? And the answer is, we can. Nothing is stopping us. As a matter of fact, I think that is exactly where God wants us. God wants us to go to the outcast, to the people who have no voice, to the people who have been excluded from being part of a community, even or maybe especially those who have been excluded from a worshiping community. Sometimes God, sometimes God wants us to go to the people that make us the most uncomfortable and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to them. There is a whole world of hurting people. And we have a message of love and joy and hope and belonging that I believe God does not want us to keep to ourselves. And I don't believe God wants us to pick and choose with whom we share the love and grace of the gospel. I mean, you may think you've been called to be, well, only a disciple, but I believe God would love it. God would love it if each of us were not only willing to live lives of faithful discipleship. God would love it if each of us, too, was a rock star like Philip. Sometimes we will go to places where we want to go and will have impact on many lives for the good. And sometimes it will mean we have to walk a lonely desert road and help the one person God presents to us. Philip, he was a deacon, but really he was a rock star. And I believe you are too. Amen.